अलहमदिल्लाबीन वसलात वसलम सैदिन महमद वाल वसाबी अजमाइन रबी शराली सदरी वसरअमरी वाहलतमसान यफ़ कौली नहमदनसम वसलम रसूल करीम अम्माबाद अल्लाम आईकम आई एम बैक फोक्स आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग ब्रेक आई वॉज डिसपियर्ड बाई द पावर्स द बी विद इन दी एम एस ए बट कीप एन माइंड फोक्स इफ़ योर इंटेंशन आर करेक्ट एंड यू मेक दी एफर्ट अल्लाह सुबहान विल हेल्प अस विल टेक केयर ऑफ अस एंड विल हेल्प अस अचीव आर गोल वट दैट बींग सर आई एम बैक ब्रदर सैद इज बैक हेयर अगेन विद यू फॉर अन अदर जुम्मा रिमाइंडर विद यू दिस दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू बी टैकलिंग अ वेरी हैवी टॉपिक एंड अ वेरी सीरियस टॉपिक फॉर आर टाइम्स Today's topic is respect for women. Specifically, respect for women is women within Islam. Islam teaches Muslims to be respectful to women. The significance of women, of respect for women, can be judged from the evidence and the fact that there is a whole chapter for, in the Holy Quran, Surah An Nisa, for women. To quote from it, "O mankind." reverence your guardian lord who created you from a single person created of like nature his mate and from this pair scattered like seeds countless men and women reverence allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and reverence the wombs that bore you for allah ever watches for you over you surah an-nisa furthermore in surah an-nisa it said o you who believe you are forbidden to inherit women against their will nor should you treat them with harshness that you may take away part of the dowry you have given them except when they have become guilty of open lewdness on the contrary live with them on a footing of kindness and equal equity if you take a dislike to them it may be something it may be that you dislike something and allah will bring about through it a great deal of good in islam women are equal to men yes it might be a very controversial statement to say for some or for most but in islam there is absolutely no difference between men and women as far as their relationship to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned as both are promised the same reward for good conduct and the same punishment for evil conduct the quran says and for women are rights over men similar to those of men over women from surah al-baqarah furthermore the quran says that women have souls in exactly the same way as men and will enter paradise if they do good from surah zukhruf enter into paradise you and your wives with delight before the advent of islam the pagan of arabs the quraysh of makkah the ja- the door the door of jahiliya we know how women were treated we have heard the stories and we have seen in cultures all across how th- even now in modern cultures even there is vi- daughters are looked upon disfavorably whether we look at different cultures all over the place it's always thought oh the lineage is only going to continue through a male we know that the pagan arabs the pagans would bury their daughters alive make women dance naked within the vicinity of the kaaba during their annual fairs and treat women as mere chattels and objects of pleasure possessing no rights or position whatsoever they could not inherit the teachings of the noble quran are revolutionary unlike other religion which regarded women as being possessed of inherent sin and wickedness and men as being possessed of inherent virtue and nobility islam regards women and men as being of the same essence created from a single soul The Sharia regards women as the spiritual and intellectual equals of men. The main distinction it makes between them is in the physical realm, based on the equitable principle of fair division of labor. Both have similar rights, even though they may be different. Islam improved the status of women. The Quran and Hadith contain loads of references acknowledging women's rights and encourages being kind to women. To treat as Muslims, it is important important that we realize the importance of women and treat them with respect. Unfortunately. unfortunately now it would seem that it is us muslims who are regressing in treatment women and giving their due rights we muslims are becoming the jahil and following the ways of jahiliya 
Women are being held back from education and fulfilling roles and responsibilities, being given importance in their decisions and their choices and their opinions being respected. One thing that needs to be understood and clarified though is that there is a difference between in freedom, equality, importance, respect, and outright shamelessness, vulgarity, and disrespect. Nowadays, it is the unclothing of women that is equated with freedom, equality, and choice. As Muslims, we are all slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do have to work. At the end of the day, we do have to work within the guidelines laid down, the rules laid down in Islam. Islam gave respect to women. It raised the status of women. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said many times in the hadith, and this is quoted from Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, to treat, treat women nicely. Furthermore, from Jamia al-Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ is quoted to have said, Women are the twin halves of men. He emphasized, the Prophet ﷺ emphasized treating women without harshness and violence. Women have been described fragile as glass and need to be treated gently. Furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is quoted from Sahih al-Bukhari, Whoever believes in Allah in the last day should not hurt, trouble his neighbor. And I advise you to take care of the women, for they are created from a rib, and the most crooked portion of the rib is its upper part. If you try to straighten it, it will break. And if you leave it, it will remain cro crooked. So I urge you to take care of women. Sheikh Muhammad Aslam, a Muslim scholar, described the importance of women in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He said, the Prophet ﷺ was born in the lap of a woman. He was delicately wrapped up and nursed by a woman. The first person to see his beautiful illuminated face was a woman. When his mother died in Abwa, he returned back to Makkah with a woman. When he returned from Ghari Hira, cave of Hira, the first person <coughs> who covered him was a woman, Hazrat Khatija Rizla Ta'ala. The first person he spoke to was, was a woman. A after the revelation, the first person he spoke to was a woman. A, first, a woman was the first to believe in him. A woman was the first to pray with him. A woman was the first to die for him. Among the early converts to Islam was Hazrat Ammar bin Yasir Tana and his wife and his mother. Sorry. He remained st she remained his mother, Hazrat Ammar bin Yasir Tana's mother, remained steadfast in believing in Islam and bore some of the most brutal torture and punishments by the Quraysh of Makkah. When Prophet ﷺ left this world, he left his head. He left, his head was resting w with a woman. His lineage continued through a woman. Bibi Fatima Zahra, sal salamun alay. And his, fi and his final words were, I give you counsel that you be good to your women. Bibi Fatima Zahra, salamun alay, is the khatun e jannat the lady of paradise. She is also the afzul nisa, the most supreme of women. It should amaze us how Muslims of all people do not know and understand the rank and importance of Muslim women. They use Islam to suppress women and keep them from getting education or keep them from participating as equal partners in making decisions or giving input. People are disrespectful to women. They feel that they have the right to be violent towards women or to treat them as inferior or feel that they're inferior. There are kings and princes that oppress women. There are institutions that have been built and funded by them. They claim to be working for women, but they achieve nothing and spend vulgarity. Because the truth is that these institutions have been built and funded by them and they spread nothing but questionable, debatable interpretations. The truth is that they do not have real respect for women. All they desire for is power and to remain in power. They crave for nothing but power. So anything they will do is to just keep them in power and nothing more and nothing else. They don't care about the people. They don't care about women. They're in violation of Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word. In the name of culture, far too long, entire generations have come and gone all over the world, which have mistreated women and have treated and not given them their due, whether it is in matters of dowry, education, jobs, so on and so forth. Entire cultures have been shaped, entire institutions have been built that justify oppressing, holding women back. And what has been the result of it? What has it all really caused and achieved? It has resulted in nothing but equating people in making the people think that the culture is deen or equating the culture with the deen, which has resulted in people leaving Islam, getting disheartened with the deen. And now they're leaving and they want nothing to do with Islam. Hopefully this video shakes something within all of us that we go out there and seek true knowledge from true, authentic, sincere scholars. Because, and this knowledge does not make us arrogant. And here's another hope, that this knowledge does not make us in, in arrogant, which are, allows us to just use this knowledge to justify certain behaviors and approaches. Instead, this knowledge makes us humble and we use the knowledge for good and for benefiting the Ummah. 
hopefully from now we will make the effort to learn the way of the Prophet ﷺ ways of how he dealt with women, how he respected women, and how he acted kindly towards them. For those listening, I urge you to continue your life with a new mentality, which means respecting women and being kind to one another. To all the sisters listening to this, I urge you to seek knowledge, seek true, authentic knowledge, about, to learn about your rights and exercise these rights within the confines of Islam. Additionally, know your history. Islamic history, our history is filled, in, filled with examples of women standing up and playing pivotal roles for Islam. We, as we just saw from the examples, and as anyone with the knowledge would see, looking at the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu would know from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu the women that we have seen and we know about. Hazrat Khadija Rizalatallahu Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaamun Alayhi so on and so forth. To all the brothers, know this, that a woman is not an object to be toyed with or played with. She is not an object that you use for your lust, for your nafs, and then you leave her, and then you move on. We have Muslim, young Muslim men within our society who are our friends, people we know, who date women, disrespect them, and then they move on. They let their nafs run like animals. They let their beliefs be shaped by twisted ideologies and twisted interpretations to do what they please. But at the end of the day, these men are, not, are nothing but animals of the nafs. They're just creatures that are running after their nafs. So for you, to the men and to the brothers, here's what I have to say. Learn to respect women, respect women. A people that do not respect their women, that do not value their women will be destroyed. Because at the end of the day, it is the women that build the generations, not the men. It is they who will nurture and care for what comes next. Men are quick to say that such a woman does this or such a woman does that. Why should I not say anything or do anything? To these reformers, if your heart aches so much at wrongdoing, if you pain so much, then learn how to actually be reformers. Do not be reactionaries. Don't go out blaring out there, screaming in the public and revealing everyone's faults and sins. Learn how to actually address. Learn how to actually correct. Learn, don't be quick to judgment. Don't gossip and spread, and spread gossips all over the place. These are not jokes. These are real things that affect real people. <sighs> Do not become the jahil and follow the way of the jahiliyyah. Hazrat Abu Huraira reported, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the most complete of believers in faith are those with the best character. And the best of you are the ones that are best in behavior to their women. This is quoted from Sunan, Sunan al-Tirmidhi. We as Muslims must change ourselves. From Surah Anfal, in Surah Anfal it is said, Allah will never change a grace which he has bestowed on a people until they change what is in their own selves. When we look uh, to women as mothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet ﷺ said, heaven is beneath the feet of the mother. When we look at women as sisters in Islam, it is our belief that if a man fulfills the rights of his sister, Jannat is declared wajib on for him. When we look at women as wives, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, best among you is the one who is best to his wife. When we see women as daughters, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you get one of your daughters married, you will be with me in Jannah. And then he raised his two fingers though, together. Surah, from Surah Nahal, we know whoso, it is said, whoso does that which is right and believes whether male or female, him or her, we will quicken to a happy life. In conclusion, to those who are listening to this video, here is what I have to say. These Juma reminders serve to remind us. Give regular short reminders to us about things to awaken our curiosity to go out there and learn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive my mistakes I made in this video. Anything wrong I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the work that we do. And hopefully people benefit from this work. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us on the straight path. Do not make us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make us of those that fall astray. Furthermore, the end of the semester nears us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us success and ends the semester well for all of us. Keep, have a bless, and we all have a blessed winter break and start our next semester great for all of us. Finally, please do not forget that the Muslim Student Association at the University of Michigan Dearborn is here to serve you, the Muslim students attending the University of Michigan Dearborn right now. If there's anything that we can do to help you, please reach out to us and we will do all that we can help. These events and none of these have any meaning if you, the students, do not attend it. At the end of the day, you are the ones that we do all of this for. 
so that we, all of us together, stay together, stay strong together, and can strengthen our Iman. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu kalika. Jazakallah khair. The power... مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم